All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Give me a yes, you can hear me in the comments, please. <laughs> This is kind of crazy. So I have not gone live yet and I really wanted to try it. I would like to do it on a regular basis, but I really wanted to test it first. So thank you all for being on here. Go ahead and put it in the chat if you can hear me. Again, bear with me because this is going to be kind of crazy. Hear you. All right. I see you. Hear you. Excellent. I can't believe this is actually working. Oh, my goodness. Outstanding. People can hear me. People can hear me. That. Thank you all so much for being in here. This is, I just decided to do this a couple of minutes ago, so I don't really know. Um, I sent a quick email out to the email list. Um, so I'm so excited for you all to be in here. Oh, technology wins again. Thanks, David. Appreciate that. Um, wow. Okay, so we got so many people on here. 40 people on the first one. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, so thank you all for everything. First of all, for watching the videos, for commenting on the videos, for you know supporting me in my in in the make me making a new a knife to bring out to the public. I really appreciate everything you guys have done. I really, really appreciate it. All right, go ahead. I mean, this is kind of what people do on live streams, right? Go ahead and put where you're from. I got a Myrtle Beach. That's not too far from me. Um, let's see, where y'all from? What is your kind of favorite meat to break down? What are the recent projects y'all have done? I want to hear it all. Got New Jersey, Taylorsville, North Carolina, Vegas. <laughs> that is so cool. It's Mecca, California. I really appreciate you guys being on here. This is awesome. Washington, Clearwater, Florida. Kobe will got the bony knife. Kobe got the breaking knife. That's awesome. Seattle, Washington. All right. So what I want to do with this impromptu live stream is I'd like to do this on a regular basis where I talk about answering people's questions. Um, I would like to get people to have, be on the Email, like, so I have an email list, newsletter, which we answer questions on, and I give you kind of updates. Um, but here, I wanted to answer just your questions that come up. So l put, like, question in your comment, and I will answer your questions. So let's, just, let's get started. So there's one person I talked about. Please talk about freezer burn ruining steaks. So I'm going to figure out where to look. So big thing with freezer burn is oxygen is not your friend. So you want to take out all the oxygen up from the packaging. The best way is from a um, vacuum sealer. That is the number, that's the best way to store your steaks after you've done your project. Um, you can free, once you vacuum seal it, you can freeze it for up to a couple of years. I mean, it's crazy. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, you can take a gallon Ziploc bag. You can put your steaks inside. Then what you want to do is do this submersion method with, you take a big bowl of water, basically, and you put your steaks in this bag. You submerge the, the bag in water, and that will push out all the oxygen. Then once you get it all the way to that zip top part, it'll push out all the oxygen, and you zip it up and then you should be good to go. It's like a poor man's vacuum sealer. So try that. All right, so next person, but tell us about sirloin steaks. The, uh, where does it come from? What primal, um, what to look for? Okay, so sirloins are a great steak. They're a great way to get a budget steak. So sirloin is its own primal cut. 
In the future, I want to do a video on where the primal cuts are and where to find the best steak on the cow. But for your sirloin steak, it has a sirloin primal. So you can find great sirloin steaks that are already cut. Um, and you just, with the sirloin, it's kind of towards the back of the cow. It's right before you hit the round. So it's not like, it's not like super tough. It's kind of this middle road of like a, a tender steak and a flavorful steak that comes off the back. So you don't want to overcook it. That is the big thing with the sirloin. Um, if you overcook a sirloin, you're going to be in bad shape. So just don't overcook it. Just get a sirloin steak. You can get some um, the the sirloin kind of subprimals and cut them, which I'm going to do another video on those. But again, get your sirloin steak. Don't overcook it. I mean, th those are my big tips for your sirloins. They're kind of hard to find those subprimal cuts. Sometimes Costco will have a sirloin tip or something like that you can cut up, but it's it's really hard to find the big subprimal cut. Let's see what else we got. Let's see. Vacuum sealer, that's what I use, good. Um, how can you salvage a freezer burn steak that's not chewy? Now, once you get oxygen in there, you get ice crystals on that steak, it's gonna be really hard to kind of bring that back to life. If you have a, a freezer burn steak, you might need to go into the either grinding it or, or braising it or stewing it or doing something else. The trick is not to get it freezer burned. So we do not, we wanna make sure we've protected it with the vacuum sealer or another method. Don't freeze it for too long. That's the other thing. If you have air in that bag and it sits there for a long time, you're gonna get ice crystals. It's gonna damage your steak. So you really want to, um, you really wanna protect that steak for the longer that you're able to put it in your freezer. So. Why are Costco steaks tough? I cannot get them tender. It all depends on what you buy at Costco. So, okay, so Costco, here's the deal on Costco. All of their cut steaks, they blade tenderize. So what that means is they take a little, little this machine that takes all those knives and cut into these little, um, they're tenderizing the steak, but they do it to all the steaks, which I don't like with the cut steaks. Even the prime ones, they cut, they, they blade tenderize them all. So that's why I like to buy the whole primal cuts, cut them myself, it saves you money. It also saves the fact that you can, um, that they're not blade tenderized. There's like, it's not, it's not probable, but it's possible that the bacteria can be pushed in the middle of the steak. Again, that's a whole other, a whole other mess of talking about it, but like, if you're gonna to go to Costco, I like to cut my own. I really do. It's because they do not blade tenderize the subprimal cuts. They just blade tenderize the individual steaks. So keep that in mind. Uh, just by, uh, anyone have a recommendation on a vacuum sealer? So I like, I, the one I have is an older food saver model. It works really well. Um, I know a Nova who they've done like um, um, sous vide machines. They have a vacuum sealer also. I have a vacuum sealer video coming out in the next couple of weeks um, where I'm gonna test a couple of vacuum sealers, but like Food Saver's good, Anova is good. I mean, just go on Amazon and really like kind of look at the reviews, stuff like that. That's a bit your best bet. List best toys for meat prep, even, even when, it, when the expense is not necessary. All right, so here's the deal. Um, you basically, here are the things you need. You need a good knife, you need a good cutting board, you need a vacuum sealer or some way to store the meat when you're doing these projects. I love a good meat grinder. Um, I have links to all these all over my channel, but again, um, you can go to butcherwizardshop.com and that has the knife line that I have that I've 
produced, which I'm going to talk about a couple times, you know, during the live streams and different things. But I have one, let's see. Another day I'll bring on some other products that I use, but this is the Butcher Wizard breaking knife, okay? So it just launched in the 1st of January. You can get it at butcherwizardshop.com. I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a link in here. But again, it is a 10 inch breaking knife. So if you are going to do these big projects, cutting a whole ribeye, something, uh, the chuck rolls, other big projects like that, they work out. You got to have a big knife. If you have a, bit, a long chef's knife, you have a 10 inch chef's knife, an eight inch chef's knife, you can, you can go with that. So I like this breaking knife because it has this little point to it. Oh, I guess. Oh, here we go. It has this little point to it. So when you're cutting, you can get all the way to the tip and it really, I can't, I'm so sorry. It really helps out when you're cutting a large slice of meat or a large cut, subprimal cut of meat. Um, I have, what else do I have in there? So sorry. There's a, um, there's also a six inch breaking knife, which I, or I'm sorry, a six inch boning knife in which I have also on Butcher Wizard Shop, Butcher Wizard Shop .com. And those, like if you're gonna do the tenderloin, you're going to um, do pork tenderloins, you're going to um, do pork loins, different, or pork loins or, um, different smaller cuts. It's a six inch knife and it helps out with some of those projects as well. So let's see what else we got. I can't find any good beef cuts in the grocery store. So at a regular grocery store, so not Costco, not Sam's, not a warehouse membership grocery store. What do I want to look for? This is a great question. So you want to go, first thing I do when I'm looking to save money on meat is you go through and you go through the sales. What is being marked down? If you are willing to cook it that day or the next day, then that's what I would go to first. Um, you can get primal, subprimal cuts from the grocery store. You have to ask. You got to go knock on the window or get someone's attention and then if you want to get a whole ribeye, if you want to get a whole tenderloin, if you, if you want to get a whole chuck roll, if they cut those in-house, they're going to have them back there. Sometimes, like, I don't know if Walmart, like, a place like that, I don't know if they do that anymore where somebody is actually on-site cutting things. Um, a lot of times they just get all of it in the prepackaged, you know, cellophane kind of deal. So if you're going to a regular grocery store, you first check the sales. Then if you want to get a subprimal cut, you gotta, you gotta talk to somebody. I know, I hate talking to people. You gotta talk to somebody and deal with people. Um, the next thing is look for the cuts that are those secret cuts. Those are those kind of special cuts that are budget if you're looking to save money. Um, I like Denver steaks. I like Chuck Eye steaks. Those are like two of my favorite like budget steaks because they're they're like secret cuts that people don't always know about, but they like the chuck eye is just like a ribeye. Basically, um, when the cow is cut into primal cuts, there is a cut between the chuck and the rib portion. So the ribeye goes to the chuck, and then there's a little bit of ribeye stuck in the chuck for lack of a better word. It's stuck in there. So you get a ribeye for a chuck price. So look for chuck eyes. Denver steaks are in the chuck roll and they are kind of like a strip steak a little bit. You know, um, they have great marbling in there. And as long as you don't overcook them, they're really good. And they're like half the price of a uh, New York strip. So those are my two favorite budget cuts to look for um, in the grocery store. They're hard to find because there's like two Chuck Eye steaks. There's just two of them. And so you really got to hunt for them. But if you find them, grab them. They're great.
Someone asked, uh, how can you get a smoker quality results if you have an um, apartment, no backyard smoker? Okay, so this is gonna be tough. If you don't have a smoker, you can still cook the same primal cuts. You can still cook them low and slow in your oven and get a similar result. Now you're not gonna get the smoke flavor, but you're gonna get that pull apart uh, goodness from, from cooking it from in, inside your oven. You just go low and slow, cook it in your oven, and it'll still pull apart. You can cook a pork shoulder in your oven. Get it nice and tender, pull apart, you add your barbecue sauce, you're gonna have very, you know, it's not gonna be quite the same as if you had a smoker set up, but it's gonna be like, you're gonna get 80% of the way there, 75% of the way there. So if you don't have a way to smoke, you can still get that, that feel of it, that pull apartness of it from inside an oven. All right. All right, so someone asked about picanha. So I'm gonna have, like, when the summer comes back, I wanna do a picanha video. I bought all the skewers to kind of like do that skewered over open fire kind of picanha thing. So picanha is in the top sirloin. So um, it's a sirloin cap is what it's called. So sometimes you'll just see uh, sirloin cap. Now, um, it says, Picanha is one of the, my favorites to cook on a smoker, but its popularity has driven the price up. Yeah. Um, is there a bigger cut I could buy to butcher up myself? So I know my Costco has whole picanhas, which is just the sirloin cap. You can also get a sirloin knuckle, um, and it'll have that cap on top. Again, I need to actually have a video about this to show you how to pull the sirloin cap off of it. but It'll be, you have to buy a whole big piece, but you can still get that picanha and have it in a, you know, have it in a slightly lower price per pound. What's a good, uh, here's a question. What's a good delivery company that has quality steaks for a good price? Okay, so I've done, so I did a video about Butcher Box. I thought the quality of Butcher Box was really good. Um, I, you know, I like the fact that they sent you new stuff all the time, so it forced you to kind of like have something new. So I like that part of it. Um, I've gotten stuff from Meat and Bone. I got some some really cool Japanese wagyu from them, but they have also regular steaks too. But if you're looking to kind of go crazy, they also have uh, MeatandBone.com has. Um, all the the Wagyu stuff. They have Prime. They have a lot of different stuff. I've gotten stuff from there. D'Artagnan.com. I've gotten stuff from them. They again have all kinds of different. Um, you can get quail, and you can get um, different kinds of beef. You can get. I got. Um, what did I get? You can get different kinds of sausages. There's all kinds of stuff that you can get from them. That's a good company too. Um, Let's see, I've looked into goodchop.com. I have not purchased anything from them, but they look to have some good some good options. Um, again, I wanna do the video in the future of where I buy like the same cut of meat for, from like 10 different online companies to show you which one's the best and which one, you know, is better than the other. Sorry, I gotta take a swig or a little Diet Coke. Oh my gosh, woo, this is kind of crazy. Thank you all so much for being here. We got a hundred people on the first one that I just sent out an email crazy. This is awesome. All right. Um, please publish this live, live stream. I'll, I'll go ahead and publish it. I don't care. As long as y'all don't hold it against me that it's kind of like, um, again, I really decided this like 30 minutes ago to throw this up there. So I will do this on a regular basis, especially with this amount of um, turnout. We'll do it kind of more formally in the future, but this is awesome. I'm glad someone, uh, Mary Lou Riley, Breaking Knife was a game changer. Thank you for buying that, I appreciate it. Um, what do you think of Chambervax? 
So, um, so a chamber vacuum sealer is basically, um, it's a bigger unit. So it's not like I use, I use it in the butcher shop. I've used it in a grocery store kind of setting where you put the whole bag in there and it, it sucks out the air really quickly. Um, I have not used any of them that are kind of for home use. So, um, that the chamber vacuum sealers, they're usually more expensive. They're going to work quicker and they're going to be more reliable. But again, it's going to be like a, I mean, the one that I used in the, in the butcher shop was like two feet by two feet. So 24 by 24. So it was a big thing to put on. It'd be hard to put on your counter. So again, you just kind of, kind of look at that. Is it cheaper to buy bundles from an online meat market or just buy the meat from Costco or Sam's and cut it yourself? Now, it's always going to be cheaper if you go and get in your car, start the engine, drive to the place, pick it up, and bring it back and do it yourself. It's always going to be cheaper. Now, is it going to be as convenient? Um, I haven't found a ton of places that do whole primal cuts or subprimal cuts. Um, Again, in the future, maybe we can find some and, and promote those. But right now, you can get like individual steaks, Omaha steaks, meatandbone.com, all those places I talked about. Um, they are going to give you the, um, they're going to give you the, just the individual steaks vacuum sealed and not the whole primal cuts. So, or sub primal cuts. So the best way to do that is to go and get it yourself. It's always going to be cheaper. But if you don't have a Sam's or a Costco or a chef store, chef store is the other place I love to go. Um, if you don't have one of those, then you're going to have to go get it yourself. So it's just, it's always cheaper to go get it yourself. If you're looking for cheapness, if you're, if you're looking for least expensive route, that's the way to go. Uh, let's see. Um, question. How many different knives do you need to cover all scenarios? Okay. The basics, let's go over the basics. You need a chef's knife, okay? That's 100%, that's a daily use for me. Like you need a chef's knife. Um, it can be 10 inches, it can be eight inches, whatever you are comfortable with using, but you need a chef's knife, that's your daily user. Um, a paring knife are good for small things. Um, I have a boning knife that I use Frequently, obviously, um, I like to use just different sizes of chef knives because it's going to be able to, it's going to be able to get everything. That's your daily user. Now, when we're talking about breaking down other big cuts of meat, you're going to need some more specific things. The 10 inch breaking knife, if you're going to break down the whole ribeye is the best. Um, again, a bony knife is great. I'm trying to think what other knives, I you need a serrated knife for like bread or something like that. Those are always good to have. Um, so I hope that answers your question. But again, you don't need so many knives. I know everyone gets these like um, sets, like when you get married or when you have a some sort of, you weren't, you, you move a new house and they give you like this whole knife set and you only use like two of them. Well, really the thing is you find the two that you really use all the time and just spend your money there. So that's my, that's my, um, recommendation. I had a couple of people who said they're waiting for their orders to arrive. Again, we are like, we are, we are in full swing. I just, we, so the butcher wizard knife collection, um, went or went live, I guess on January 1st. So we are still trying to get all those orders out. We're using a, um, a third party warehouse and is, oh, wow. I learned a lot about how, how the warehouse and how packaging and how everything works. So bear with me because it has been quite a, <laughs> quite an interesting, um, learning experience trying to figure out how all this stuff works, but we're going to, everything's shipping out. We're getting into you again. If you don't have one, butcherwizardshop.com is the place to get them. So all right, here, oh, here we go. Uh, question, what's a Denver steak? Chuck eyes are great, what's a Denver steak? Okay, so the Denver steak also comes out of the chuck roll. So 
in the chuck, one of the subprimal cuts of the chuck is called a chuck roll. And I've done a couple of videos on this, so you can check my channel. But um, what happens is, so part of the chuck roll is the chuck eye, and that's the, that's a good part for kind of like a rib eye. And then underneath that chuck, uh, the underneath the chuck eye is the Denver steak. So a uh, Denver steak is a portion of that chuck roll that is kind of like a New York strip steak, but it's again, it's we say it's kind of like that because it's it has good marbling, it has good flavor, it has great flavor, but it's a little tougher if you cut cook it medium well or above. So it is a cheaper way to get a New York strip esque steak. So go check out a Denver steak if you haven't had one. They are delicious. I love a Denver steak. Um, every time I do a chuck roll video, we I cut up all those Denvers and and it's it's so good. It's so good. So Denver steak, check them out. All right, so someone asked me, uh, Mary, did you say you were a chef aside from being a butcher? So I have I have spent the last 20 years in the food industry, I would say. So I Started when I was 16 years old. I worked in a fine dining steakhouse. After that, I went to culinary school. I worked at, I worked after the culinary school, I worked in a, um, the mansion on Turtle Creek, which is a five diamond, really fancy place in Dallas. So that was, that was a fun experience. Um, after that, I managed, a, I managed different restaurants, different, um, uh casual dining restaurants different, just all kinds of different restaurants in, in my town i was in oklahoma city um then i taught culinary school a little bit for three years i taught all the different classes in culinary school i focused on like sanitation knife skills meat butchery all these things um i've worked in grocery stores i've worked in butcher shops i just kind of done the whole gamut of everything related to food, I've done. So but that's kind of a little bit of my background in like 30 seconds. All right, so Costco in New Jersey doesn't sell chuck rolls. Where else can I get this? So, all right, chuck rolls. If, if you can't get your Costco person to get you a chuck roll, which is kind of crazy because they got them back there, but whatever. Um, Sam's does chuck rolls so you do the same thing you got to ask for it um if you, you go online and look for a place called the chef store chefstore.com i believe um it is the u.s foods is a national distributor to restaurants but they have an open to the public thing called chef store and they're not in every city but they're in a lot of cities um go check what the nearest one is to you and you kind of it's almost like a Sam's, but if it was only for like serious restaurants. So you go into like their their meat area and you gotta go, it's like a walk-in, like uh walk-in freezer or walk-in refrigerator. It's very cold, bring a jacket. And you can go and look for a chuck roll and they have them. They have whole tenderloins, whole ribeyes, whole chuck rolls, they got all kinds of stuff. So chef store, um, Sam's or um Costco are my best bets to get a chuck roll. Um, question about dry aging. Yes, I wanna get into more dry aging. I love dry aged steaks. Um, I gotta kind of play around with the different products that are available as far as the dry aging bags, which ones are best. I have to do a little more research before I put it out on the channel, but yes, I love a dry aged steak. Um, and it's like, it's a super easy way to save a bunch of money on a dry aged steak because they're really expensive. Um, let's do that. What cut of meat from Costco or Sam's for a New York strip steak? Okay, so a New York strip, you're gonna look for a whole strip loin is what it's called. Sometimes they call it New York strip loin. Sometimes they call it a New York strip roast. Um, sometimes they just call it a strip loin roast. So a New York strip comes from a strip loin and you'll be able to cut those 
um, like I do in one of the videos, but strip loin is what you're looking for. All right, someone says they couldn't find a nine pound Boston butt at Walmart, uh, but they found it at BJ's. I don't have a BJ's near me. Um, if I'm ever in a city that has one, I'll go check it out and do some filming there, but I don't have a BJ's, but it's kind of like Costco or Sam's. So go check them out too. I'm sure they, they might have what you're looking for. Again, it's just about asking. And it, I don't like to ask anyone for anything <laughs> when I go to the store, but if you really want it, go ask for it. See what they say. The worst thing they say is no, we don't have it. Um, when I asked my Costco about uh, chuck rolls, I was like, can I get a chuck roll? He's like, what are you going to, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? And I go, well, this is what I do. I'm a, you know, I have a YouTube channel. I cut it down. I break it down into different parts. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'll get you one. So you never know. You just got to ask. All right. Thanks for all the tips. I really appreciate that. What's your favorite type of steak? Oh, oh, I know that guy. Um, so my favorite steak, I think, for my family is a filet mignon. So we like um, – it's so funny. I've done all these videos, and then um, I broke down ribeye, strips, filets, all this stuff. And my family loves filet mignon. So we will um, – they love the fact that I'm doing that on videos and I have some available in the freezer. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but I would say for my family, they love a leaner steak. So uh, filet mignon. Again, I love ribeyes. I love every steak. I don't know if there's a piece of beef that I don't like. So, um, but again, for my family, they more resonate with the leaner cuts. Bristol, Virginia, DC area, North, you know, thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Who do you recommend for buying meat? Sam's or Costco? All right. The great debate. If you saw my last video, which you should check out the channel and see the last video where I took the prepared foods. It was kind of fun. Took all the prepared foods and went, who loves Sam's or Costco more? I get different things at Costco than I do at Sam's. Um, Sam's has a, um, I would say they have a better, um, they have a better system for discounting steaks that are already cut. So when you go to Sam's, they have those little yellow tags that they do every day that say what needs to be sold right away. So if you're looking for a deal, Sam's has a better way of giving you those deals. Um, Costco is just kind of always there. It's all my Costco always has whole strip loins, always has whole ribeyes, always has whole tenderloins. Um, and if I ask them, they'll give me a chuck roll. So with those four things, I can get 90% of the way to all the things that I want to do. Um, lately they had picanha, they have had, uh, knuckles, which are part of the sirloin knuckles, <coughs> excuse me. And then it gets me all the way. So I don't know. I have one that like, for in my town, there's within a mile, I have a Costco and the Sam. So I don't really have to choose. So there's a, someone says there's a chef store in Charleston. Again, they have them all over the country. They're not in every city, but again, I got one in mind that's, my, my city's not too huge, so. Somebody said they found a strip loin for $7.99 a pound. Go pick those up. I mean, with all the prices going up and up and up, if you can find one for $7.99 a pound, you're, you're doing good. Went to the so I went to the butcher counter at the super. This is Randy Taylor. I went to the butcher's counter at the supermarket. He went into the back, got a chunk, cut a, a few sirloin steaks from it. He gave me them, but it was tough when I cooked it. Do I need to age it? Okay, so 
sirloins, you're going to have, you can't cook them super well done. Like you can't do medium well. Um, again, sirloins, again, from the back of the cow. Um, I wanted to do a whole video about where these steaks come from on the cow. But again, sirloin is right before you hit the round. So you're going to, you're getting a lot of muscle use. So the sirloin is going to be, it's cheaper, but you're going to have to cook it a little bit less. Um, if you have a sous vide, th that would also be great. You can sous vide those things for longer and get a medium steak that you cook for a longer period of time. It breaks it down. It's a little more tender. So a little thing for sirloins. Just don't cook them too much. Oh, somebody's in Colombia. Yeah, not too far. Not too far. You know where the uh, um, Spartanburg has the uh, chef store, Spartanburg, South Carolina. So if you're looking for the chef store. All right, someone said, I, I recently asked the butcher at Sam's in Daytona Beach for a truck roll, and I got a very stupid look, and he shrugged his shoulders and apparently didn't know what I was talking about. You're going to have that from time to time. These are meat cutters. They're, you know, if, if you have a, if you want to go another round, you may not want to, but if you want to go another round, say, when you, when you cut your chuck roast from, can I have that whole piece of meat that you cut your chuck roast from? Because all they do is they get big chuck rolls, right, in vacuum seal. They cut them open. They just slice them down into chuck roasts. And then your chuck roast is going to have a whole host of different muscle groups in it. So they have the things back there, but it's getting them educated on, I want that whole piece that's called the chuck roll. So, so you can break down your own. But you can always ask them, hey, that thing that you cut chuck roast out of, can I have the whole thing? Do butchers charge extra for thinly sliced strip ones? It depends on your butcher. Um, it depends on where you go. Um, some smaller butcher shops, because it takes more time, they're going to they put it on a meat slicer or whatever if you want thinly sliced. Um, I don't know if you mean like like super thin sliced, like for like um, – why uh, can't I think of this? So if you want super thin slice or do you want just like, like a one-inch slice for a steak – uh, you want a Philly cheesesteak? There we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's been a long day already. Um, if you want a Philly cheesesteak kind of slice, what do you want? So you're just going to have to talk to them and see what they want. How do you turn up a cowboy cut ribeye steak? So um, with the ribeyes and the bones, bone and ribeye. So a cowboy cut is basically a bone and ribeye with a little bit of the bone exposed. Your tomahawk ribeye is going to have more of the bone exposed. So you're going to have a bigger piece of bone. Um, to break those down yourself, you're going to have to buy the ones that have the bone in. And then you can kind of cut in between each bone, depending on how big it is. And you can cut each bone and French those bones. So that means you just, basically means you just take your bony knife and slice off that meat in between each bone. So um, you can do it yourself. You can get it done for you. Um, but again, bone and ribeyes are all kind of the same. It's just, they call them different for how much bone is hooked to the ribeye for better terminology. Thank y'all. There's a bunch of people who love the... Uh, Love the videos, love the streams. I really appreciate it. Thank you. How are steaks in a smoker compared to a gas grill? So gas grill is going to be hotter. So you're going to have a better crust. You're going to have better grill marks. You're going to have all these things because it's hotter. A smoker does not get as hot. So you're going to get more flavor from the smoke, but you're not going to get the sear that you're looking for from a gas grill. So that's basically... You kind of have to like play both sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to play both sides because like even if you have like a I have a pellet grill and it like does kind of both like okay. It smokes okay and it grills okay, but it doesn't smoke or grill awesome. So 
um, some of these different grills that do both things, you're going to have to kind of like play with it. And which one do you want more? Do you want the smoke flavor more? Or do you want the hot grill like sear more? Uh, let's see. In your opinion, where's the best place to find lamb or mutton? So um, lamb, mutton, so mutton is the older version of the lamb. Um, again, I would just look in my grocery store, in your Costco. I know Costco has, my Costco has, they had leg of lambs, they had uh, lamb chops, different things. So you're just gonna kind of have to look on, um, where the best place is in your area, what's available. So that's the best thing I can tell you about that. Where are we at? Ooh, this is going around quick. Um, so is it, is it worth it trying to negotiate primal cut prices or prices final? I've never negotiated from a grocery store or a wholesale club or something like that. Um, so it's just kind of the prices are what the prices are, um, in my opinion. Now, when you, if you're looking for the best price, you have to think about getting as close to the source as possible. So if you want the best price, you're gonna look at buying a whole cow, a half a cow, a quarter cow, working with a, a rancher and a processor and getting all the cuts down. Um, that's, the, that's the most, that's the least expensive way to get, um, to get your beef. Now, the more people that touch it is the more expensive it is. So we go down, so from buying a whole cow, we go down to buying primal cuts. That's your, um, even, even primal cuts is hard to find, but you want to go to sub-primal cuts. That's where we're finding cost at Costco and Sam's and stuff like that. Those are sub-primal cuts. So the, <clears throat> the short loin primal cut has te a tender loin in it. It has a strip loin in it. Well, if I want to get a sub-primal cut, every time someone has to touch the, that beef, then the price goes up. So... We're trying to get as high up as we can on the um, for having less people touch it, and that's the way to get the best prices on beef. And that's kind of what I'm doing is like with this whole with my whole channel is trying to find where normal people, regular people can go find a subprimal cut of beef, save some money, cut it up yourself, and give you that confidence. Um, that's, that's kind of where my channel's at. You know, um, I, some other channels that I love, I love the bearded butchers. Like if you haven't checked out their channel go check it out. They're awesome. Um, but they have like a ranch and they have a, like a, they break down whole cuts of like whole cows. <laughs> they break down the whole thing and it's super cool to watch them do it because I mean, you can see where it all comes from. The kind of the, the niche that I'm in, the, the, the thing that I want to tell people is how a normal person can do it without a, you know, thousand acre ranch and a huge facility for breaking down whole cows. We're going to, I'm going to show you where you can go to get a, get it, cut it, get the best deal you can and get the best quality you can. Okay, so someone says, uh, the other cut I saw was a Delmonico. Um, I don't know the difference between a Delmonico and a cowboy. So cowboy ribeyes, cowboy cut ribeyes, basically just a bone and ribeye. Um, a Delmonico is a boneless, is a chuck eye, actually. Um, when you see a Delmonico in a restaurant, it is a chuck eye that they are calling a Delmonico. That first cut off of the chuck is a Delmonico. So it is a rib, it is a ribeye, but it is in the chuck. So that's why when you see it on a steakhouse menu, it's a little different than the ribeye.
Oh, somebody said, I just got my knives, a 10 inch and a six inch um, from you. They were are super nice and they just cut up a chuck roll. So much meat for cheap. That's awesome. Um, I would love to know too, I really want to see these things. What would y'all think if I did like a Facebook group or something where we could easily post pictures? I think that would be cool to see what all the projects people are working on. Um, so that's something I got in my brain for the future. I have way too many thoughts in my brain, but I was thinking maybe doing a Facebook group or something like that where we could, um, you could post your pictures. Um, I don't know what y'all think, but it's kind of something that would is in my brain of doing. Um, trying to think what else. Oh, sorry, Discord channel. I, maybe I'll do a poll on YouTube. How many people use Discord rather than use Facebook? So, but I'd love to see what people do because people, you know, reply back to my emails and they, and they, they Instagram, Facebook. They'll tell me, "Hey, yeah, I did this project. I'd love to see it." Do we have any other questions? I know we've been doing it for forty-five minutes. I, I've watched a lot of live streams, and then like people are like, "Oh." It's been like an hour. I don't even know, but like this is this is pretty cool. Oh, some people don't do Facebook. Some people do Discord. Um, so I'm going to put a link in here for the butcherwizardshop.com. That's where the knives are available. Hopefully this works, we'll see. I don't know if it's clickable, but it's butcherwizardshop.com, and that's where all the knives are. Um, I have a 10 inch breaking knife, I have a six inch boning knife. Um, you can go to some of my older videos and see which ones have a link about getting on the uh, email list. So I have an email newsletter that goes out weekly that kind of recaps what we do every week, all the different places I have content. Butcher Wizard Shop, or oh, sorry, butcherwizard.com also has blog posts and different things about um, some of the recipes I use and some other things. Um, so, I mean, this has been really cool. I'm going to continue to do this and I'll do it with a little bit more planning next time. We'll have some more we we'll have some better content about uh, um, uh, more teaching and then Q and A. But man, this has been great. If anyone has any other questions, what's the best tool I can buy besides a butcher knife? Okay, so again, things you need. So you need a chef's knife. That is kind of your overall good knife to chop things onions, carrots, celery, meat, everything. That's your daily user, right? Um, a bony knife is good. A serrated knife is great. A paring knife to do small projects. Um, those are the best. I, If you're going to do butchery for any length of time, invest in a meat grinder. Um, there's links on my channel for that. Uh, so meat grinder, uh, meat slicer is good. The next video I have coming out, sneak peek for all the people who are on here is going to be how to make deli style roast beef. So that's really cool. Um, a, a good thermometer is great. Um, I've been using the meter thermometer, like infra, or the meter wireless thermometers. Those are great. They've been sponsoring a couple of, or a couple, um, they've been sponsoring a couple of videos. So that's been great. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I will post this on the channel since everybody seemed to really like it. A hundred people were here. This is insane. So really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. I will let you all know when the next one is. Thanks. Bye.